All right, everyone, so I got myself a nice little load of wood chips here. And you can see, if you go on chipdrop.com, now I'm not sponsored by them, but it does actually work. And they will ship to your house at some point. You never know when it's gonna happen. You know, it is free. Uh, you can pay for it. And that's actually what I had to do was pay about $20 for them to finally get to my house. But we do have some wood chips here with actually a lot of the green stuff in here that's sort of already broken down. You can see the leaves have already started to break down. And underneath here, the whole thing is steaming. Man, this pile is hot. And there's a lot of wood chips. You can't really determine exactly how much you want, but I wanna tell you guys my plans for what I'm doing with these wood chips. Obviously, we're gonna put them down on the ground. I mean, right, that's, that's pretty obvious. But if we come into the backyard, and show you guys exactly what my plans are, where I'm gonna put them. Um, I wanna do that now. We also are gonna be doing mushrooms. And I've tried to get big logs like this. You know, this is sort of, you know, sort of right, but sort of wrong in that we want ourselves a really nice log and I've been struggling to find myself a tree guy that will come here and deliver logs for me because I wanna cultivate mushrooms and you need specific species of, uh, of log of wood you know definitely hardwoods for a lot of the species of mushrooms and you also want you know not just hardwoods but the right species of the wood itself the species of the hardwood you know a lot of these um, these mushrooms won't grow on certain types of wood so it's <laughs> it's important and then also the wood has to be fresh because if you have wood that has been lying down on the ground for certain amount of time, there's a very likely chance that something has already come along and inoculated it. So you can see on this particular log, there's already mushrooms growing on it. So um, that was a big issue with me and I've had spawn, I've had mushroom spawn in my fridge sitting there for a long, long time. I mean, years, about a year, I think. Um, and that's what they say to do with it, is that if you can't use the mushroom spawn right away, put it in your fridge, but we got ourselves a nice little mushroom patch going on right here. And I think I'm gonna add more. We may have to water this in a bit more, but we are gonna get about, you know, an inch and a half of rain just today. I'm surprised it's not raining already, but basically the, the, the basics of how we set this up is put down cardboard, water that in really well, break up the cardboard as much as possible, and then throw on the, the sawdust spawn on top. And then we throw on many layers of wood chips on top of that, and this will all break down, and that uh, mycelium will certainly get inside a lot of these, um, these decaying uh, pieces of wood here, and we can have ourselves a nice little area, a nice little patch of mushrooms. So, my plan is actually to extend this again over here with another species of mushroom. This is the shiitake I have over here. We're getting more shiitake and then we're also getting some wine caps. So I'll have the King's Trafaria probably over here. And I can actually extend this even all the way over here if I wanted to. We can throw on a lot more wood chips by the way because what I want to do back in this area, it's just been heavily neglected guys. And this is kind of what I really wanted to show you is that this whole area has just been a mess and I haven't had the time to weed everything. Um, there's been a lot of things I planted, a lot of things I had to get done and I just couldn't come in here and do everything I wanted to do. Um, so as a result, there's just a ton of weeds and they're everywhere and I can't really keep up with it. So what I think is a nice solution, I even have some vegetables back here, things that have actually gone to seed. Um, this is really healthy Swiss chard, believe it or not. Um, we also have in here things like radishes that went to seed and they're, they're huge, man. These radishes are massive for what they should be, um, at least the size they should be. Other things have gone to seed, the mint's getting out of control. So what we're gonna do, and I don't really want a whole lot of things underneath these apple trees here. These dwarf apple trees are pretty weak really don't have the greatest of uh, root systems. They're also shallow rooted, it seems like. They grow very sw slowly. They're actually more susceptible to pests, it seems like. Um, so what we need to do is add a lot of fertility back here. This has been the key. We've talked a lot about this with the comfrey. You know, we cut back a lot of the comfrey. 
We threw a lot of that over here underneath the plum trees and that's been breaking down. But uh, things like apples and pears and plums and different stone fruits, I'd rather add more organic material to the soil than other trees like my figs and persimmons and jujubes. I think a lot of the more temperate fruits appreciate more organic material. At least indefinitely, these dwarf apples. I mean, these things are just, I don't know, sort of a bigger disappointment. Um, I don't really want to harp on that too much, but you can tell there's just a ton of material, a ton of weeds, a ton of biomass back in here that we're just going to lay down a ton of cardboard. And then on top of that is going to go this, this material, the straw, you know, all that wood chips that we just showed you guys. I mean, I'm going to have it in different locations as well in the yard, but that's the majority of where that's going to go. And you can also see we had a, a storm that came in and the, you know, the, one of the trees got damaged and we got all the branches up, put them in this bag. But I was like, you know, I'm not going to throw this away. I'm not going to let the township take this. So uh, we're going to put all that stuff underneath these trees. Again, really build the soil, get this stuff going, hopefully get these apple trees to a happier and healthier state uh, next year. So that is mostly the goal here with these wood chips. And again, it's like chipdrop.com. If you guys are interested in getting these wood chips, uh, it worked out well. I mean, it took me over a year to get it, but <laughs> I eventually got it. And um, I did have to pay $20 so if you've been waiting a long time, just put in a little bit of extra money and I think that will solve the issue. So I may sign up for a different thing and um, you know, I've got a lot of mushrooms now coming in, at least areas that I'm inoculating them. So I may not even worry about getting myself logs anymore. Um, it's a shame because I really wanted to grow lion's mane, but um, you know, it is what it is. I don't know where I can even put logs at this point, maybe back in the corner over here underneath the, uh, the black cherry tree in the corner of the yard. But um, yeah, I don't know. So we're gonna come at you guys with how to inoculate those wood chips as well with our sawdust. And uh, yeah, stay tuned guys. Hopefully you enjoyed this one. Just wanna do a little brief chat about the wood chips. They're super, super nutritious guys. And I've had, plenty of material that's broken down. Actually, I should show you this. I've had a lot of material over the years that, have, that has been dumped down underneath specific trees. And I've been, over the last like four years, trying to build the soil in certain locations. And it's worked out extremely well. So much so that the growth is insane. And in fact, a lot of the trees are growing too much. And um, I'd rather actually have them slow down their growth and focus on fruiting like that giant persimmon tree right there. And then also our mulberry, which we've cut back. And it was all the way up to the, to the window up there, which is about 20 feet. So, um, you know, the mulberry has certainly a very vigorous tree, but the fact that I've had all these wood chips underneath the soil here has really aided in the development of the soil. And it's like three inches deep. I mean, I could come in here and get myself compost if I wanted. It's really dark in here, so I hopefully, you, okay, you guys can see, but I've showed you guys this. This is just, you know, mountains of wood chips that have decayed, and it's just completely black soil. And it's been like this um, for about a year or two now, because I've been doing this for about four years. It takes a while. You have to just keep adding more material, but it's really worth it. And I would definitely not recommend it on the persimmon. <laughs> at least feeding this persimmon at all is a bad idea because they just want to grow and then that's it. Um, we're gonna have to make heavy cuts, which is kind of the opposite of what we really want to do because the more pruning we do, the, the it just responds with more growth. So, uh, you know, it's a bit tricky. We'll see what happens, but, um, yeah, <laughs> that's kind of the wood chips in a nutshell. I'd rather put them over here on these trees, like my plums, my, um, my stone fruits, you know, my pears as well. Get these guys to a nice, healthier, happier state, a bigger size. You can see all this comfrey that we put down. This was about three weeks ago and look how 
dark and black it is already. I mean, it's pretty much broken down, which is just nuts. Uh, and then there's some more over here I want to show you guys. So, yeah, it's just crazy. And what I'm going to do also, I guess, in this area is throw in more, more um, cover this soil too. You know, I want to cover all my soil if possible. Same thing over here with the straw. Really put down as much of this mulch and wood chips as I can. Same thing with this raised bed, although I think we are going to put figs in here. Uh, they're already trying to grow. I've rooted some cuttings in here, so uh, or I'm rooting some cuttings. So we're going to put down probably, if these take, and this is what my eventual plan is, we're just going to put down more rocks. And I think that's a much better material than wood chips for somebody looking to warm up the soil. The wood chips cool down the soil. And that's what you want for certain things. You know, the things like your cherries and your stone fruits, like your apples that just wake up too soon and then they get hit with a late frost. Uh, whereas the fig and the persimmon, I want those things to wake up earlier. I want the soil to be warmer earlier because I want those fruits earlier. Um, and they're not gonna get hit with that late frost. They're so late to wake up as it is. Whereas other things like, again, my stone fruits and my apples, man, I want them to stay dormant as long as humanly possible. So anyway, guys, I wanna thank you all for watching this one again and uh yeah oh another big thing get yourself a big wheelbarrow and also get yourself a you know multi-pronged pitchfork a wide pitchfork a bedding fork is actually i think the proper name for it that's going to really help you get those wood chips out of that pile and into this wheelbarrow and it's going to really speed up that process because that is a lot of wood chips that's a lot of wheelbarrow loads here and if you don't have the right materials or the right tools, it's going to make it a lot harder. So, all right, guys, take care. And uh, Ginzi says hello, and we'll catch you all soon. See you for tomorrow's video. Take care, guys.